In today's video, I'm going to give you a tour of my rebuilding arcade and game room. Starting with my office arcade, you guys always see in the background of me. Find out what else is here. To my actual game room, which was my living room, <laughs> set up now has turned into a complete gaming and memorabilia type room. And last but not least, the third room in my setup, my little space, formerly known as the Genie Cade, being rebuilt as the Genie Cade 2.0. Hey guys, it's me, it's me, it's Michael B. Thank you so much for checking out the video, and today, I'm gonna give you a tour of everything I've got going on in my gaming space, and of course, the most exciting thing for me, getting my space back, the rebuilding of the Genie Cade. And I'm gonna show you more about it right after this. So that's right guys, in today's video I'm going to give you a little bit of insight into what I've been working on the last couple weeks, months, it's taken me a long time, you guys have no idea how hard it is for me to find spare time lately, but the little bit of tinkering I've been doing, modifying my space, and most importantly recapturing something I lost in the last little while, which is my space to have a home arcade, to you know rebuild that experience from when I was young, because we don't have classic arcades like that here anymore. So now I'm trying to recapture that and have a space of zen in my own house, a space of nostalgia. But before we get into that, I want to say thank you so much, everybody, for checking out the video. Guys, I always appreciate the support. If this is your first time to the channel, you like what you see, go ahead, subscribe, click the bell for notifications, all that YouTube jazz. Anyways, I think the best place to get started with the tour is probably right here in my office slash arcade area. So let me turn off the blue light, turn on the white one, and we're going to do this on my phone. So let me get my phone set up to record video. Here we go. There we go. Let's turn it around and get started. Well guys, let's start directly behind me, what you see in the back of every video now, which is my office arcade. I guess the best place to start would be the iArcade. Uh, you guys probably are wondering why I bought an iArcade in 2024. But my buddy Mike Dalton, he was looking to get rid of some of his iArcades. He was actually struggling a bit trying to move them. So I said, what about 200 bucks? We agreed on a deal and now I have an iArcade in 2024 little nostalgic for the machine, but also I got the amazing um, mod, basically, iArcade mod chip from Nix, and uh, I forget the name of the group now, but the Mystery Encoder mod for this thing from Nix, so now I'm up and running, uh, I forget, where is that anyways, it's over there, I'll show you in a minute, I'm sure I'll come across it, but uh, I bought it just so I could mod it and test that out. We'll see how that goes. I mean, again, it's a great machine. 19-inch screen that looks good. The sound is fantastic. It was always suffering because of the lack of game, so now I can do something about that. Next to that, we have the old reliable, the Legends Ultimate. Unfortunately, my uh, bit LCD is down right now. It's something to do with the cables, the USB cable, the way it connects on the inside. So I'm going to do a little bit of tinkering with that and try to get that back up and running. But other than that, obviously, I love this machine. It's got a 24-inch uh, horizontal monitor. Of course, when you play games in the 4x3 aspect ratio, it's about a 19-inch screen. So about the same size as what you get on the iArcade. Control panel has an amazing configuration for all kinds of games. Let me move my PlayStation 5 controller and tip over those hats I had there. So you've got six buttons, which is your normal arcade configuration. You've got spinners in a good location and a trackball up the middle. You can play pretty much anything with this. Uh, of course, go watch videos on what you can actually play from the modding community. But if you don't need a ton of nostalgia and you just want to play games... This is probably the easiest solution out there for Multicade for most people. Uh, you know, if you don't need, uh, you know, Street Fighter art, you don't need Mortal Kombat art, Pac-Man art, just go get yourself Legends Ultimate. You can literally play everything on this, right? Speaking about playing everything, we've also got the Legends Pinball. This is just the HD. So I am got this pimped out with every game that came out for it. And I also went out and added on the Buy Stuff Store back box which is a must for this gives it that big back glass here instead of the small one that came with the original 
uh, just like they did with the new Legends 4K. I actually got the horizontal DMD, so this is perfect for playing retro, uh, you know, 90s DMD style games. The DMD looks really good. That's probably why I'm going to keep my Legends HD even after I get the 4K. Uh, the art, I actually really like the art. I know Kamala did this for At Games, and what he did was he actually took the classic Gottlieb back glasses, and that's how he formed uh, the side art. I mean, up until now seeing Adam's Family and especially Attack from Mars, this is the best looking product At Games came out with to date, in my opinion. Then underneath there, I apologize for uh, not having this set up yet, but I also have an external PC. I hooked this up for OTG on this, and I play Visual Pinball, Pinball FX, Pinball M. I haven't got FX and M working yet. I got to talk to Wagner about that, but. I mean, thanks to that PC, it can do it all. Now, later today, when I get a little bit of time, hopefully, but I don't know if I'll have time before WrestleMania, I've also got to install the arcade control panel. I went back to the original control panel on this for a while because I thought I was going to move my arcade control panel over to my Ekings Legends Pinball 4K when it comes. But I don't know necessarily if I'm going to do that now. I think I'm just going to buy a new... Uh, arcade control panel because they are available at the brick. I'll have two, so I'm going to reinstall that and then get my PC set back up for OTG on this bad boy. Now, the only thing that's really missing, guys, from this space is I'm waiting on my At Games Legends Pinball 4K to show up. Should have enough room for all four of these machines. If I don't, it's going to be a very At Games heavy room because I arcade after I do the mods and stuff. I may have to find a new place for you in the house. Maybe you'll become the family room arcade for my kids to play with. And now here, guys, is my gaming streaming PC setup. So you've got a two screen setup done, so that helps me with streaming. It's a, a miracle how people do this with one screen. I don't know, especially if you're sharing assets on the screen. I've got my Elgato key lights, my Canon M, uh, is this an M50 or M200? I think it might be an M50, might be an M200 uh, camera I've got set up all the time. There's my Elgato mic. I really need to get a pop filter for that. My HB Omen PC, I did some upgrades with this Christmas because I was having some issues with it. So I actually upgraded the graphics card to a 4070. I had to upgrade the power supply to take that. And I only had one 16 gigabyte stick of RAM in there. So now I have four with this hot RGB lighting going on. Yeah, I'm an Uber nerd now. So, And there's the keyboard Patrick complains about all the time. But it's so pretty, I don't want to get rid of it. Then just over to the side here, you'll see my various collection of controllers. There's my Sin and Light Gun, which is really going to come into use when I uh, mod my iArcade. And there's my various classic consoles. My uh, Legends Core Puck is in there as well. As well as you can see my Pac-Man dongle for my Pac-Man jo Giant Joystick. Yeah, a lot of fun stuff here. Now, I used to have a TV on this wall. <laughs> Unfortunately, I just have the scars of it now. I really need to clean this up with a screen because what I actually do is I was fortunate enough to get these projectors. I got two projectors here that I got for review. What I do now is I hook my classic consoles up to these, and then I game on this wall back here, which actually is a pretty awesome setup. If I had the screen, it would be a lot better, and it actually is a lot better than having the TVs. And then just behind the projectors, you can see my mini arcade that I've got going on here featuring my Replicade, New Wave Toys Replicades, Missile Command, Dragon's Lair, Space Ace, not the conversion kit. How cool is that wacky looking thing? Ghosts and Goblins, Qbert, Food Fight, 1942, Coke, and Berserk is on the way. Can't wait to add that to this growing collection. I don't know if these are going to actually stay in my office or these may go in my toy room somewhere once I get some new shelving built. Now, I know, guys, what a mess, right? Now, you're probably wondering why we're coming in here because there doesn't look to be a lot of gaming stuff. But I just want to show you this because this, in fact, used to be our living room and where I played with all of my uh, modern gaming stuff. Uh, this is the setup. But unfortunately, because we had two kids, my wife, and we had so many friggin' toys for our kids, there's the Infinity Game Table back there, had so many friggin' toys for our kids, my wife decided the kids need a playroom, 
So here it is. I lost this room for my retro consoles and, and not my retro, my modern consoles where I did all my modern gaming and it got overrun with children's toys. Now this is the children's playroom, which honestly some days they don't use enough to justify it. <laughs> and here guys, here is what my living room turned into moved down to the basement. This became a dedicated game room and as you can see i've got some cool shit in here we moved uh the big uh, sectional down here it's a snug fit like it actually doesn't even fit in the room <laughs> it comes out a little bit over the entryway uh i don't know if that uh is so hot or not anyways here is the room and all the cool stuff you see still a bit of a mess i'm still working through this move literally almost killed me but Let's go over what we have in here. So first up is what was always here, and this is this wall of media. I'm a big proponent of uh, physical media, and we were big DVD collectors. So this is where I house like all my games, all my DVDs and stuff like that. So if you come over here, you can see up on the top shelf, I've got my wall of the classic console boxes. I've kept all of them. There's some He-Man bobbleheads my wife got me for Christmas one year. The PlayStation Classic. There's the complete uh, complete collection of the Turtles cartoon. Genesis Mini 2. There is the G.I. Joe Classic cartoon. Transformers above it. An original Lionel. And I actually got a Lance from Voltron over here as well. Uh, I'm devastated that I can't get my hands on those Target exclusive re-releases of the 84 Voltron series. So yeah, there it is, and here is what I'm probably most passionate about when it comes to DVD collecting. Here is my horror movie collection. Uh, believe it or not, this may seem pretty extensive for DVD, but you should actually see my VHS horror movie collection. It's still up to my parents. I just haven't uh, justified to my wife how I could possibly take it up. So yeah, there you go. There's some X-Files there where that runs out. And of course, this is for um, my good friend, 19K Fox and Nostalgia. Dragon Ball, baby. It's all about Dragon Ball. I don't really need most of these now due to streaming services. I mean, I can watch all of X-Men on Disney+, Plus, G.I. Joe on Tubi, Batman the Animated Series on Netflix, DuckTales on Disney. Yeah, I don't need a lot of this stuff anymore. Now, around here somewhere, I was looking for this the other night, I've got a copy of Digstown that I mean to break out and watch after Louis Gossett Jr. passed. Uh, moving over here, we've actually got... Uh, my Switch games, and then we've got PlayStation 4, going into my uh, moderate PlayStation 5 collection, and then uh, on the bottom, Xbox One and Xbox Series X. Honestly, outside of Switch, which I've been buying a lot, I haven't been buying a lot of PlayStation 5 games or Xbox. Honestly, the most Xbox I play is through Game Pass, so even though I'm a physical collector, I guess I'm falling apart in that section. So moving back to the main section of the room, you can see I've got my horror movie posters up on the walls. They're taken out of my arcade. They're actually going to be moving back into my arcade relatively soon. Won't have room for everything, so Stranger Things Season 3, probably not going to make the cut. That'll probably stay in here because uh, i got a couple other posters, some Transformers posters and a Return of the Jedi poster. But I think all the horror movie posters are going back in the arcade and maybe the Back to the Future poster as well will make it way back there, just because it's my favorite movie of all time. Anyways, on to the main event. This is where I do all my modern gaming right now. Currently playing through Final Fantasy 16, and man, oh man, this game is awesome, but also an incredible friggin' slog. It's driving me crazy, because sometimes it's awesome, sometimes it's not. So to this TV, I've got hooked up my um, PlayStation 5. That's my Switch OLED there that's turned to the side for some reason. Next to that is an Xbox Series X, and there is my Steam Deck dock. Uh, I've also got some controllers down there, all those various uh, Nintendo Switch retro controllers, because I play that. There's a little Star Scream and Destro action going on over there. And then a little Ryu and uh, Jack Burton figures going on over there. Of course, you guys have seen this, heard me talk about this quite a bit. This is my Stern Premium Godzilla Pinball Machine. Absolutely my pride and joy in my collection. It's my favorite thing I own. I used to have two pinball machines in here. But unfortunately, like if you go back and take a look at the space here, 
it, it was a pretty snug fit, in, in fact, to actually make that happen. And what I'd have to do was I'd have to move the TV further over against the wall so it wasn't really centered in the room. And then the two pinballs were there. So, uh, you know, I just really didn't have room for two. So it made it easier to sell Dungeons & Dragons to put that money aside from Stranger Things. Now, you're probably saying, if you didn't really have room, how's that going to work? Well, I'll explain that to you in just a second. So I want to tell you guys about my biggest vice, and that is 80s toys in their original packaging. Oh man, I can't get enough of these. So when Masters of the Universe came out, I went nuts on those. These are just the ones I never took out of the package. Now there's stuff still on the back of that that I've got to get out. Uh, there's uh, a couple other... Uh, different uh, vehicles and stuff. Uh, Panthor, you can see, but there's other stuff behind there. This is actually the two-pack of what Skeletor looked like before he was Skeletor, Skeletor and what Trapjaw looked like before he was Trapjaw. So that was a exclusive pack, but ended up being very easy to get here in Canada. I've got to put the rest of my figures in place, the loose ones from that line that I took out. Here is actually some Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and you might be saying, big deal, uh, those turtles are very available. These are actually from Toys R Us, going back 10 years ago. There you can see the original party, well, not the original, but the re-release from that Toys R Us line from about 10 years ago. I've got all the original turtles, and I've got Shredder and Master Splinter. Behind that is actually a five or six pack of figures. So I think I've got Bebop, Brocksteady, Krang, Slash... I don't know who else is in there, but they actually come in one of those, uh, oh, I forget what they're called, the tunnel things that came up through. Right below that, we've got our Ghostbusters area. So this is the Ecto-1. And then out of the package, because me and Scarlett did a review on it, I've got Popeye Ghost and Fearsome Flush. There we've got Slimer and the Marshmallow Man. And then on top of that, we've got the Ghost Popper. Behind them, we've got empty sleeves, because I also opened the original Ghostbusters. But funny enough, guys... For Easter, my wife actually hooked me up with some new Ghostbuster figures, so I'm going to be adding to the collection. I've got Fright Features Peter Venkman, Fright Features Raymond Stance, Fright Features Egon Spengler, and then we've also got Fright Features Winston Zeddemore. So I've got all the Fright Features figures now, adding to my real Ghostbusters collection. I think I'll leave these in the box. I'm a bit of a idiot that way. <laughs> I can't help myself. And I also got a new He-Man figure. I wasn't really connecting these anymore, but we went to Marshall's one day, and this was on sale. Tongue Lasher from the Snake Men. So, yeah, adding Tongue Lasher to my collection. So then on the other side of the toys, we've got some Transformer stuff back there. We've got a giant Optimus Prime. We've got a... Uh, this is back from... I think this was 2007... This is the uh, re-release of the original Optimus Prime with his uh, back area, his cargo. And there is the G1 uh, Soundwave in this weird Toys R Us exclusive packaging. There he is there. I actually need to get a new one because they just released a 40th anniversary. I've also got some other Transformers here. We've got Devastator, Optimus Prime, Bumblebee, Rodimus Prime. Right behind him is one of the... Uh, Oh, I forget what they're called, uh, Headmasters. And then we've also got Starscream right back there. Going down the line, we've got the most recent release of uh, the G.I. Joe 3.75 inch figures. So uh, I got really frustrated with these because before I would only buy these if I could get them in store. And honestly, getting stuff in Canada is a friggin' nightmare. So I collected a bunch of them and then they just stopped with the series. They stopped releasing them. I got a Hiss Tank. I've also got the Cobra Fang there. I got a bunch of figures. Uh, I may end up opening these because I actually have more G.I. Joes around here. I've got a pile of the 25th anniversaries that I've also need to display as well. So yeah, these might eventually be opened. We'll see. Um, I also really got in some big trouble recently because I started collecting the uh, G.I. Joe classifieds. I had managed to avoid it for a very long time, but unfortunately the G.I. Joe classifieds came out with a retro line on these card bags. And that was enough to get me in, and I've managed to buy almost all of them so far. Moving down, uh, this is a bit of a weird entry for me. These are the Dungeons & Dragons toys. They just recently released. Uh, a lot of people saw them on clearance in Ollie's. I managed to pick up Hank, 
uh, Diana and Dungeon Master and Verge are on sale. I had to buy the rest off Amazon. So I I'm actually going to be opening up these. These aren't original toys. They are 40th anniversary of the Dungeons and Dragons cartoon, but they never ever had toys. They only released toys for the 40th anniversary. The other reason I'm going to open them up is because my son had a little fun with uh, Eric here and tore open his packaging already. So might as well. The packaging's so friggin' cool though. Anyways, these will be opened up. I'm probably going to do a review on these relatively soon because uh, a lot of people thought they were kind of crappy. I know De Geek Dad Life did a video saying they weren't so good. Last but not least, I got a Beast Wars Optimus Primal and new He-Man figures. I bought these just because they were on sale. So, yeah. I've got more toys I've got to display as well. Like, I got toys from my parents, like my Dick Tracy originals. Oh, so much stuff. What I'm going to do, I think, is right now I just have these, like, you know rubber rubber made shelves but eventually what i'm going to do is once the pinball machine comes out i'm going to put shelving all over that back wall so i can display my toys now let's be honest guys here's what you really came to see what is going on with the space that used to be the genie cade well you guys know i had to bolt it out for storage so there's the other side of it you can see just absolute jam-packed with stuff but i was lucky enough I managed to mostly clear out this area. I've got a few more things to get out, but yeah, I've got half an Arcadian. So I took all my XL cabs here downstairs. Killer Instinct. I'm so lucky to have this XL Pac-Man. Absolutely love it. NBA Jam with the screen modified, modded out, and Golden T 3D with the screen modded out. Like I said, I've got to move my posters back here and put those back up on the wall. Also going to get my uh, fluorescent light up and then my arcade light sign over there. This is the area right here. <laughs> I still need to clear out. There's just some old uh, cabinets filled with stuff that we've accumulated over the years. We really got to Marie Kondo this place. Right here, uh, this stuff here, I've got a PlayStation 3D TV. And in those boxes is actually my childhood Nintendo powers, all my strategy guides and stuff like that. So got to find a new home for that. Uh, but what eventually this space is going to come, I do believe, is this is where Godzilla Pinball is going to go. And I should still have enough room for Stranger Things or another pinball machine. We'll see if Stranger Things is still available by the time I save up for it. It's actually a good thing. I didn't, uh, you know, get enough to really invest in it right now. Uh, you never know what could happen with people's jobs. The economy is crazy. So... Me being a not-for-profit executive director, I'm always worried one year to the next, so maybe it's a good thing I didn't manage to get it this past year. Anyways, here is my new Deluxe Cabs. I managed to pick all three of these up on sale. This is the new mini area of my arcade. I'm not saying I'm all in on buying the Deluxe Cabs. It's just there's very specific arcades that I'd be willing to add back in that I, I want to have in my life. Like, I want to be primarily an XL you know, larger size arcade. Yeah, I said real arcade. I'd be interested in going back and collecting real arcades again. So larger size arcade to, you know, arcade recreation, toy arcade versions, XL from Arcade 1-Up, and hopefully New Wave Toys eventually do an XL or bigger size cab. But there's some I just had to have. And I mean, you talk about nostalgia from when I started going to the arcades. Three of these are near the top of the list. You add in WrestleFest, and you add in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and you've got my top five arcades from my genre when I actually went from, like, 89 to about 92, 93. So these are the big ones. I mean, Terminator 2, I got that's because it was mispriced on sale for $4.99, so happy to add that back. Of course, I got the Deluxe Street Fighter. We were lucky to even get it because it never went to regular retail here in Canada. I got that one for $5.38 on sale. And then, of course... For the uh, Leap Year sale at the Brick, I finished it out and got Mortal Kombat Deluxe, which I'll be doing a review on in the next couple of days. And, like, think about it. I sold all my arcade one-ups and kept these stools. Worked out, didn't it? <laughs> Anyways, I uh, absolutely love that. If I didn't have all the storage space and I didn't need to store all this stuff, and I'll be honest with you guys, most of this stuff isn't even ours. It's from when my wife's grandmother passed away. Like, we just took her stuff, and... It's hard not to be sentimental and just give it away. Please don't report me to hoarders. But, you know, I, I would love to have the arcades I'm missing, like, uh, obviously, Star Wars, 
Tron, if I didn't buy the real Tron, I would still probably have that. I probably never would have got rid of any if I still that still happened. And then, of course, um, Dragon's Lair as well. I would love to have those, but with limited space, I want bigger arcades like XLs, or it's got to be something that really, really is something I'm passionate about from my youth and really good. So yeah, that is basically my plans for my arcade. I've got one or two pinball machines going there. We'll see. I've got my little deluxe lineup here. I don't really have any fast plans to run out and buy any deluxe cabs. Who knows? They might do something and surprise me, like do a Robotron. But the focus right now is on adding more Excels to the space or larger arcades like New Wave Toys or maybe real arcades. We'll see. So, what did you think, guys? Let me turn the lights back down on the blue, get that ambience going here in the office. Anyways, guys, that's my look at what I've got going on in my gaming space. I'm very fortunate. I'm lucky enough, I have three rooms. I have this home office, which I get to keep my multicades in, all my tinkering stuff. I love this space, and, you know, hopefully I get to keep it much longer. I don't think we're having any more kids, so I shouldn't lose this. I get to do all my work out of here, and, uh, you know, can't wait to add the At Games Legends Pinball 4KP relatively soon. Then, of course, I've also got what used to be my living room, and now it's condensed into this whole gaming space. Even though it's not a living room anymore, and I call it a gaming room, it's fun because my daughter actually still comes down, and I have my son down there sometimes too. We play pinball, uh, we'll all hang out on the big couch down there, uh, we'll play games together. Just the other day, I was down playing Final Fantasy XVI while my daughter was on the other side of the couch playing on the Oculus. So, you know, it's still a very cool family-centered space, but they keep get to keep all my toys and trinkets down there without the pets getting into it. And also, you know, I, <laughs> I can't exactly have toy collectibles up around my kids, as you saw what Tommy has already done to my poor Dungeons & Dragons figures. Then last but not least, rebuilding my arcade, and that one I, I'm super excited about. Maybe I'm pushing it a little bit too far, but I, I did manage to clean out half the storage room again, because if there was one thing over the course of the past year I really missed was having that dedicated arcade space. I love like the arcade one-up cab, seeing the art and seeing that full experience. It's one thing to play them on a multi-cade, which is amazing, but I, I'm, I'm a very visual guy. I like that nostalgia. That's why maybe I keep buying these toys with the original packaging. I want the packaging on my arcade experience as well. So, you know, I, I've got that space down there. I'm going to move my real pinball machine in there and maybe I'll add real arcades again one day or hopefully they come out with more XL cabs. But I've got a space down there that I'm really happy with now and I'm looking forward to decorate more and get sorted out more so I can become ever more comfortable. Most importantly, I can turn on all my machines, turn on some 80s hair metal, and just chill the F out, right? Anyways guys, let me know in the comments below what you thought of my tour and my project. Keep in mind this is a work in progress, I'm still working on it, I'll give you an update once everything is finally done, but let me know what you think of it. Anyways guys, Thank you so very much for watching. This is Michael B. The Game Genie. I'll talk to you next time.